Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So in this video, we are going to look into one of the important skill that every developer should have, right? That is debugging. Have you ever faced a problem where you are not able to identify a bug inside your application and you are struggling for a long time, right? So that happens with a lot of developers. But by using debugger inside your IDE, you can dig down into those issues and quickly find the resolution instead of scratching your head for a lot of time, right? So in this video, we are going to debug our application by using IntelliJ. So there is an awesome debugger that is provided by IntelliJ. I'm going to show you a lot of tricks in order to debug your application. So this is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So without wasting any time, let's jump into the application directly. So here we are using an e-com project and here in this project, we have a lot of functionalities implemented already. So if I go inside main e-com and there will be a lot of folders you will have few controllers you will have many services over here right so this is a big of an application right so if something is going wrong over here then that might be difficult to resolve right so this is basically a spring boot java application don't worry if you don't have idea about spring boot but even if you are working on a simple java project you can still apply the methodologies of debugging that i'm going to show you over here right so don't focus on the code just focus on the way i am debugging right now here I have a product controller, right? So this is basically a product controller that we have, which have various APIs over here. And we also have a product service over here, which have few functionalities. Now, how do we run our application, right? First thing, we can go to this e-com application and we can start our application over here. Just run your application. And from here also, we have these little icons over here. So this play button over here will run your application. And there is one more button over here, which is debug your application. Now, if you want to debug your application and enable debugger for your application, you will need to start your application in debug mode first. First thing, start your application in debug mode. Now let's get started and let's start our application. So I'm just going to go and click on this button over here. So if you have a simple Java class, which have a main function, then you can just right click over here and start your application in debug mode, right? Now this application is deployed basically. And this is basically the interface of your debugger. So if you see at the left hand side, you will have something called as debug tab, right? That means this is basically the debug tool that we have. By default, it is showing us the console as our application is just deployed. We are seeing this console output over here, right? Now let me pull up my postman. So postman is a tool that I'm going to use to hit this particular API that I have added inside my controller, right? So there is this API, let's say add product. So let's try and add product over here. So add product is here. So I'm going to hit this particular API. Now, if I hit this API, then I got the response, right? That means my application is working fine, right? Let me maximize this window. So my API is working fine. How do I debug now, right? So now from this particular API, I am passing this particular body from here, right? So let's say this JSON will be converted to this product. Now let's say at this particular point, I want to check what is the data inside this particular product object, right? So typically first thing that I could think of is I could just add a print statement over here and print the values, right? Product dot get this, get that, right? You can just print the values and check. Okay. These particular things are coming and that you can see at your console, but how many print statement you are going to add inside your application? If you want to debug a lot of things, then how you are going to do that, right? What you can do over here is add a breakpoint, right? So basically there is a concept of breakpoint. So on whatever line you want your code to stop while you send your request, you can just go on that particular line and add a debug point. So just click on that and that will add a debug point for you, right? So that is basically debug point. So I want to stop over here. So I'm adding a debug point over here that I want to stop over here, right? Simple. Then if you can see over here, we have many options over here, right? Now this particular option over here, it says mute breakpoints, right? And now it is enabled. That means your breakpoints are muted, right? So this is muted. So if I again hit this particular request, still it won't stop here, right? Because it is muted. Now, if I click on this again, then it will be unmuted, right? And as you can see over here, this particular breakpoint is turned to red, showing a tick. That means it is enabled now. Now, if I go back and now if I hit this particular request again, then did you see what happened? It came here and stopped at our breakpoint, right? That means our execution is at this point over here, 
right so that is basically the break point and that's how you can stop your application over here right now we were at console right now it got automatically switched to threads and variables right so here the major thing is variables that means what all variables that we are playing along with over here are displayed over here that means we wanted to check the values of products right so if i just expand this then you will see that id is null because we are not passing it from here right name is product product is something that we just sent right price is two and description is hello right that means our details are coming fine right so let's say there is some scenario when you are passing something but it is not being reflected inside your db then you can start looking from here that what are the values that are coming in the product are those right right everything that you can look into right so in this the variables of this class will be there so product service is injected over here so you will see a variable called product service and that product service will be displayed over here right so variable section will display the data of all the variables the next thing over here is this section at left hand side is frames right so to reach this breakpoint what are the classes your thread went through will be displayed inside this particular frame right so now this is the first class that we are looking into that's why it is only showing one but you will see that there are 57 hidden frames those are hidden because this is a framework level classes those are called and it's not showing us that data right and now we are at product controller right now what i will do i will go to service so let's say i am here in the service right so product controller will call this method of service right now let's say i want to stop here as well so i will add this debug point here as well right now if i click again over here it we will go back to our breakpoint where we are currently now let's say i want to resume right so you will see this play button over here which says resume program right now this resume program is to jump from one breakpoint to another breakpoint so one breakpoint is here and the next breakpoint is inside our add product right so it will come over here right once you click on this particular resume program right so let's click that if i click that it just jumped through it just jumped to your next breakpoint right now you will see that there are various frames that are added over here that means we were at product controller after that there is this internal class which is proxy after that there is a aspect and after that our product service is called so the flow of your code you can see over here right and there will be a lot of internal files though that will be added over here and those internal frames if you want to see then what you can do over here is you can just go to the right side over here you will see the layout right and you can just enable this thread right so there is an option called as thread over here if i click on it it will just open a lot of threads over here at the left hand and you will be able to see what all threads are being invoked what all functions are being invoked while your main thread was running right so so first thread is basically the main thread of your program right if you open this then that thread went through a lot of functions right so currently it is at add product but it went through a lot of functions which are hidden inside these frames right so if you want to check what all internal methods are being called right then that is something you can check by using this thread tab right so it is again a very very useful tab over here and you can take a thread dump right how you can take that you can just click on these three dots and there will be option to get a thread dump if i click on that you will get a dump like this and it will again have the runnable your main thread and as you can see over here the runnable thread is now at product service right so it is running product service so you can just export this particular thread dump as well so you can just click on this particular icon over here which says export to text file just click on that and you can just save that particular file and the file will be saved right so that is basically thread dump so thread dump is again very very important when it comes to multi-threaded application you can check if there are any deadlocks or what threads are waiting or what threads are running right for example here you see that this particular thread is in waiting state and few are in running state so all those things you can check by using thread dump right that is basically threads right where you can see your main thread and and all the functions that your main thread went through right now there is another important option over here is evaluate expression right so let's say i want to check what is this save is returning right so what i can do i can just copy this right 
I can just copy this. I will just select and copy it. I will say copy. And what I will do, I'll click on three dots and there will be option called as evaluate expression. Now this will just open a window for me, right? A new window. And whatever I copied is already there. Or you can just go ahead and paste it if it is not there, right? So what I will do, I will just evaluate now. Now, as you can see, the result of this particular expression I can see on the screen, right? And this particular object is basically returned by this save method to me, right? So that is how you can evaluate various expressions, right? So basically there are a lot of conditional expressions that you have inside your project, right? Perhaps in the if case, right? And you want to check what is the value it is providing, right? So you can check that by using evaluate expression inside your project, right? So that is basically evaluate expression. The other option over here is step over, right? So this resume program will go to your next breakpoint, but if you want to go to next line, just next line to it, then you can just click on step over it. It will take you to the next line and you will also have step into. That means if you want to go to internals of this function, then you can click on step into. For now, I'll click on step over so that it will come on the next line. So it came on the next line basically. And now if we step over, then it will go to the internal functions, right? Because there are a lot of classes lot of internal functions will be invoked for example this aop utility classes right so it is going inside now if i resume the program again then my invocation is completed right it says the application is running right and now you will see the response on the api side right so client side the data is delivered right that means your execution is completed right so there are few more options over here for for example, if you click on this view breakpoints over here, it will show you all the breakpoints that are added inside your entire application. Now in my application, I only have two. Let's say I add one more, then it will just add it over here, right? So you can select all that means you have removed all the breakpoints, right? Let's say you have thousand breakpoints in your application, then you cannot go one by one and you cannot remove them. You can just go over here in this option. You can just click this and all the breakpoints will be removed basically, right? Just mark this as done and it will be removed and you can just again add it back like this right the moment you want to mute your breakpoints just click this button and you are done one more last important thing that i want to show you is basically the memory right so you can just go over here at the right side let me bring it up and just go over here at the right side and click on and click on this particular memory and it will enable something like this so this option will be enabled right now this memory will load all the classes that are present in your application at the moment, right? So let's again invoke this particular API, right? So now we are at here, right? Now what I will do, I will just click on this load classes, right? As our debugger is stopping over here, that means our application is waiting on this particular debug point. Now let me just click on this load classes and it will just load all the classes and the count of that particular classes that means the number of objects will also be displayed over here right for example let's say i want to search my product service then i can see that there is a one product service available inside my application that means only one object is created and there is another object which is basically a proxy right cglib proxy that you will understand in future videos if you are following my series in the memory at this point what are classes are present that will be highlighted by this memory option right so this is again an important option so i have highlighted a lot of important options that are present inside your debugger tool and that will come in handy in your day-to-day -day life while debugging your application in most of my videos i will be using this debugger and showing you a lot of things while debugging if you are not aware of debugger then you will be wondering what exactly I'm doing right so this video was to give a basic idea of the debugger tool so I hope by now you have clear understanding of debugger and you will be able to effectively debug your applications and resolve issues so if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they are also aware about debugging inside IntelliJ that's it in this video see you in the next video